Beastie Basic Architect. So, we're out here at the Build Show Build Boston site. I was deciding, should I even shoot this video? Because I'm going to be brutally upfront and honest with you. I still have a lot to learn about electrical systems. They are changing like the weather out there. We have some really cool stuff happening here. I'm going to kind of give you the 10,000 foot view on what we're doing here. If I had Sean, our electrician, he'd be able to rattle off all the information to you, but I'll probably do it enough justice for you to just sit back and go, damn, that stuff's available. Yeah, it is. Um, if you want to learn more, go find it out because that's what I'm going to have to do. Anyways, we have a 400 amp system. Um, here in Massachusetts, unlike a lot of places, um, we have to design this house to be an all-electric house. It's part of our state electrical code. Um, even if we're sitting there and said, we're going to put in a gas stove, a gas boiler, a gas um, instantaneous hot water heater, doesn't matter. The electrical load that we submit for permitting has to include electric water heaters, heat pump, um, electric heat pump technology, for our heating and cooling devices, as well as all of our cooking, induction cooktop, all of that, the electrical load has to be such that it can get swapped out and the house can service a fully electric system inside the house. So we're stuck with the 400 amp system here. That being said, you can see we have two panels behind us. Um, in some of my previous videos I talked about, we have a, I don't know, probably 26 kW um, PV system that goes to eight end phase battery system that we're storing our power there. I believe we have like 40 kW worth of, uh, kWh worth of uh, um, battery storage. And so what happens in the house if we lose power we have what we would call the non-critical loads, and then we have the critical loads. So you can see, I mean, our electrician does a really good job. No battery backup. So these are basically all of the circuits that if we lose power, we lose a hall light or a light to the office or a wall sconce um, somewhere, you know, out the back door or something. But none of this is mission critical. The mission critical stuff is in the battery backup panel, right? So these are things like our refrigerator, freezer, outlet, our heating system, um, so that when we lose power and we jump over to the battery power, then the stuff comes through our battery panel, swaps it over, and we go pretty much mission critical circuits. Now, the circuit breakers here, and this is where it gets a little fuzzy, so I'm, I'm saying it up front. Bear with me. I think this is information that's worth hearing, but you're going to have to dive a little deeper. Um, this is all uh, Schneider technology, and we have smart circuit breakers here. You can see these um, that are there, but our circuits are tied to smart outlets and light switches, right? All of our outlets and light switches have a QR code that you could scan in and through the app you'll have the ability to shut off literally any outlet or cut the power to any switch. Now I don't know enough about the system. I have my personal views. I'm trying to understand why is it that you know we would want to do that. I know there's a lot of people out there who say, well, if I have um, control over every one of the outlets and every one of the switches um, and or circuits, then I can do my own load management and I can do it when I'm not even at the house. So if there's a storm and I'm in Colorado and something happens, I can pretty much shut down the house except for maybe the heating system, the refrigerator and a few other things. And that way there, I'm not drawing as much power out of my batteries or requiring um, as much power from my PV array so that all of that stuff will last a little bit longer. I mean, <clears throat> that's a, I mean, probably a 50 or 100 year storm 
you know, that you're talking about. I've lived in New England pretty much all of my life except for about four years. Um, but in the Boston area, I've been here for, I don't know, probably close to 30 years, um, a little bit more even, 34 years. And we've lost power maybe three or four times, and the longest we've lost it was maybe 30 hours, 48 hours at the very most. We have some areas, South Shore and such, that when they lose power, they'll lose power for maybe three or four days. So we have to do a lot of houses out there where we put them on um, what you call it, generator systems outside that they automatically click on and uh, run the house. But we're using our Enphase batteries very much like you would use the generator from that system, right? You lose power, bang, we start drawing down from the batteries as opposed to the generator clicks on and burns propane or, um, you know, gas to run itself to power the panel. So either case, so, but the whole load, load management and, you know, these things are not um, the cheapest outlets and light switches. I'm not going to reveal the price. You can ask me in the comments and I'm still not going to answer. Just call Square D and you can get your pricing. But they're, they're not $10 or $20, let's just say that. Um, but you do get the power to, like I said, control pretty much every outlet and or every light switch in the house and put that load management at your fingers. You also can go on the app and understand where is your load being divided up? What's it using the most? Um, years ago, we did a house. Uh, it was a passive house. And we always were under the assumption that probably the refrigerator would be the worst case. Um, and the guy was a retired engineer. And he um, had um, devices on there that could measure the electrical loads on all the specific circuits. And to our surprise, the cable box was the biggest criminal. And it was operating at a load of something like 2 to 2.5x of the refrigerator. So what we thought was the problem was a lot worse with the cable box. And the cable box generated an immense amount of heat, um, too, because it was in the closet up above where we had a bunch of other stuff going. So... Um, you know, there's always something to learn. And even though you've been building houses or designing houses for a long time, every house that we design, we design it a little different than the last one we did because we learned something, we made some changes. Those changes create causes that then have new effects that we have to respond to. And again, you know, this is my first time using load managed um, outlets and switches. So like I said, our electrician is totally in tune with them. Sean's doing a great job. You can go watch the uh, full length series on the Build Show Network where we've uh, outlined the whole construction of the job site here and on the rough electrical and on some of the finished electrical videos, Sean talks you know a little bit more in depth about this just because he's got a little bit more knowledge of it. So. Anyways, take it for what it's worth. There's some exciting stuff happening here. I'm going to go learn a little bit more. I would suggest you go learn a little bit more, and together we can make the world a better place. So, I'm Steve Basic Architect. This is the Build Show Build Boston site. And until next time, long live our buildings.